Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt, Prime Minister of the Commonwealth of Dominica. Honorable Dr. Irvin McIntyre, Minister for Finance, Economic Development, Climate Resilience, and Social Security. Honorable Roland Roy, the Minister for Agriculture, Fisheries, Blue and Green Economy. Honorable Julian Defoe, the Minister of State in the Ministry of Agriculture. Honorable Lakia Joseph, Parliamentary Secretary in the Ministry of Agriculture. Other government ministers, the Financial Secretary, Ms. Dennis Edwards. Uh, Mr. Ryan Ansam, Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Agriculture, other Permanent Secretaries, Senior Officials of the Ministry of Agriculture, including Mr. Ricky Brumont, Director of Agriculture, as well as Mr. Kevin Stevenson, Manager of the PIU, Staff of the PIU, other Senior Officials of the Ministry of Agriculture, Representatives of Regional Contractors, Inc., Mr. Paul, and members of the media, good morning, everyone. This morning, we're here for the signing of the contract for the reconstruction of the National Abattoir, and we'll get right into it by inviting the Honorable Roland Roy to address you. Good morning. Thank you, Mrs. Smith. First, let me acknowledge the presence of the Prime Minister, Honorable Bruce Skerritt, Honorable Irvin McIntyre, Minister for Finance, other cabinet colleagues, the Financial Secretary, Ms. Dennis Edwards, the, the PSO of Agriculture, Mr. Ryan Anslam, staff of the Ministry of Agriculture, and staff of the PIU, media, good morning. It's with great pleasure I stand before you to provide brief remarks at this small but significant ceremony. The contract signing for the reconstruction of the National Abattoir. Over the past years, the Ministry of Agriculture has been working tirelessly to transform the agri-food system by investing in the expansion of production and the construction of key agricultural infrastructure in an effort to enhance the livelihoods of farmers and farm families and to increase agricultural contribution to GDP. When I refer to the agri-food system, I speak to the entire value chain, which encompasses the primary production of food, aggregation or consolidation, post-service handling, transportation, processing, distribution, marketing, disposal, and consumption. The National Abattoir is a key component of the value chain, which aligns with government's broader vision to reduce the importation of meat and meat products while encouraging the consumption of wholesome, locally produced products. As we commonly say, let's eat what we grow. Investment in this new abattoir is not made in isolation. The government has targeted investment along the livestock value chain to ensure that the necessary ecosystem is created to enable the sustainable development of the livestock sector. Some of these investments include the purchase of over 500 bags of animal feed distributed among 80 pork and poultry producers, the purchase of 18,000 burdock chicks distributed among 45 poultry farmers, the purchase of materials for the construction of resilient pens as a cost of $7.3 million, the rehabilitation of the central livestock farm to ensure that proper breeding stocks are maintained, investment in technology by establishing the appropriate infrastructure to accommodate artificial insemination, the transfer of technology and pest and disease surveillance and management through extension services, and creating the framework that enabled the contractual engagement of farmers to supply pork and poultry to a secured market. The National Abattoir, which was constructed in 2012, was battered by Hurricane Maria. And although repair works were done, we still encountered operational challenges. Several assessments were conducted, and it was recommended that the total construction of the poultry slaughterhouse and the rehabilitation of the pork slaughterhouse 
would be more cost effective than the frequent repair works. In addition, there was a need to improve the food safety systems at Abattoir, which required more efficient layout and working space and new equipment in keeping with international best practices and standards. Currently, the activities at the abattoir are suspended to facilitate pre-construction works and the planned construction. The workers at the abattoir are reassigned to other activities within the ministry and special arrangements have been finalized with the owner of a private abattoir to purchase the birds from farmers who would normally produce for the national abattoir. It also provides the ministry with the opportunity to build capacity of our local producers to do their own processing. And we will support them on the agribusiness component we launched sometime last week. The ministry received proposals from seven firms during the procurement process. Of those seven firms, regional contractors was the most competitive bidder. And as a result, was awarded the contract in the sum of $5,004,133.03. The duration of the project is expected to be 12 months and executed in two phases. Phase one will see the finalization of designs with all specification and technical documents. And phase two will be the actual construction to be implemented within nine months. The reconstruction project encompasses the construction of the poultry slaughterhouse and the restoration of the plague slaughterhouse with new lines and equipment, as well as the rehabilitation of the main abattoir building. The works will also include the construction of new perimeter fencing and the rehabilitation of the water system. Significant emphasis will be placed on climate resilience, sustainable and renewable energy, wastewater treatment, and cost effectiveness, both in design and construction phases. Additional resources of $1.4 million was secured through the Emergency Agricultural Livelihood and Climate Resilience Project for the procurement of a backup generator, water treatment plant, refrigerated transport and freezers, incinerators, and other specialized equipment. So in fact, the total rehabilitation costs for the National Abattoir is approximately $6.4 million. Upon completion, the Abattoir will have the capacity to process 4,000 birds and 50 pigs per day. Ladies and gentlemen, this is just a fragment of the investment that are currently being made in the agricultural sector. Within the next few weeks, you will see the commissioning of the $11 million a cultural science complex, which houses the teacher cultural lab at One Mile Postmouth. Soon, you will also see the commissioning of the new water system at Grand Savant Salisbury, which will benefit 63 farmers at a cost of over $500,000. And by the end of this week, contractors will be invited to provide proposals for works on three out of the nine fish lighting sites, which we have targeted for rehabilitation while we prepare designs and costing for the remaining six sites. In closing, I would like to urge the contractors to execute this project with urgency as there are many farmers whose livelihoods are dependent on the services of the abattoir. I would like to take this opportunity to thank all the farmers who have been providing chicken and pigs to the abattoir for the patience and understanding as we go through this stage of rehabilitation and improvement. And lastly, I would like to extend my appreciation to the staff of the PIU and the supporting staff of the ministry for the commitment to advance in this project. I pray for the successful execution and completion of this project, and I look forward to the commissioning and operationalization of the new abattoir. Thank you very much. Thanks to 
Honorable Roye for the overview provided as well as the background of the project and certainly for the expected benefits of the reconstruction of the abattoir. At this point, I invite Honorable Dr. Irvin McIntyre, the Minister for Finance, Economic Development, Climate Resilience and Social Security to address you. Okay, good morning. Let me first recognize the Honorable Prime Minister uh, Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt, Honorable Roland Roy, Minister for Agriculture, Fisheries, Blue and Green Economy, Honorable Julian Defoe, Minister of State, Honorable Lakia Joseph, Parliamentary Secretary, Financial Secretary, Ms. Dennis Edwards, Mr. Ryan Ansem, Permanent Secretary, other Permanent Secretaries, Senior Officials of the Ministry of Agriculture, to include Mr. Ricky Brumant, Director of Agriculture, uh, Mr. Kevin Stevenson, Manager PIU, representatives of the Regional Contractors Inc., Patrick Paul, members of the media. Pleasant good morning to everyone. Today's ceremony convened for signing of the contract for the construction of the National Abattoir in the amount of $5,004,133.03 fills me with great optimism. It is a significant milestone in the pursuit of our national and sectoral development goals and objectives. Such progress must be considered in the context of prevailing domestic and global constraints. These include increasing demand against diminishing availability of development finance, geopolitical conflicts, consequences of supply chain disruptions, climate change, and a range of structural issues. It is, the, it is for these reasons and more that the theme adopted for the 2023-2024 national budget is resetting to ensure judicious use of government resources. Currently, the theme of the agricultural sector is resetting agriculture to contribute $700 million to the national GDP by 2030. This signing ceremony today is but an incremental step towards the realization of this goal. I must bring to your attention that the financing requirements of the Dominica Climate Resilience and Recovery Plan 2030 is estimated at seven to eight billion dollars. Therefore, we are very pleased that the reconstruction of the national abattoir at a cost of EC5 million along with 1.4 million allocations for new equipment for that abattoir could be justified under the World Bank Contingency Emergency Response Component Livelihoods and Climate Resilience Project. Seven firms indicated, in, indicated in expressions of interest in the reconstruction of the abattoir. Three of them met the deadline for submission. I congratulate Regional Construction Inc., who emerged successful bidder. Moving forward, I would like to outline the context and associate constraints to be addressed if we are to be successful in achieving our policy and strategic objectives. One of the 10 critical high impact initiatives outlined in the Climate Resilience and Recovery Plan, that's the CRRP, is establishing Dominica as a global center for, cultural, for agricultural excellence. It is projected that this initiative will transform the country into a model for best practice regionally and internationally, working across value chains from farmers to end users. As stated in our national agricultural policy for the medium term, successful transformation of the sector will depend on the existence of an appropriate institutional framework and governance mechanism, well-defined agricultural plans and strategies, and effective delivery mechanisms and capacity to translate plans into underground impact. The expected vision emerging from such a transformation is an agricultural sector which is resilient diversified, market-driven, competitive, and, com and contributes to an environmentally sustainable, prosperous, healthy, food-secure nation. Government is mobilizing resources from a range of sources, including government resources, donor funding, which includes technical and bilateral cooperation, <clears throat> the private sector, and civil society, to fully finance the agricultural policy. Government's capital investment in agriculture, fisheries, and the blue economy for this fiscal year 
is estimated at $47.5 million. We are projecting that at least another $265 million will be spent, God's willing, in the medium term. We are all aware of the adverse impacts of the sector by a number of events during the last two decades, including extreme weather <coughs> events such as extreme weather events and events such as COVID-19 and the vagaries of global market conditions. Notwithstanding, the sector's contribution to gross domestic product in the 2022 fiscal year was $274 million and preliminary estimates suggest growth of 4.5% in 2023. The goal of 700 million contribution by the sector of the gross domestic product is not insurmountable. As a government, we will continue to make the significant investments in the sector to achieve this goal. My role includes fund finding the necessary finances and resources to invest in the sector, as well as monitoring our progress to achieving these goals. Achieving these goals is critical to this government's ultimate goal of maintaining above average growth and sustainable development for Dominica. We are building a resilient Dominica. We are building a dynamic Dominica. We are building a prosperous Dominica. Let us all work together to achieve this. I thank you. Thank you, Honorable McIntyre, for your insight into government's overarching agriculture policy and the investments being made to help us reach our goal of $700 million to GDP by 2030. The Honorable Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt is with us and he will now address you. Please welcome Prime Minister. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Let me recognize the Minister for Finance, Honorable Dr. McIntyre, and of course the Minister for Agriculture, Honorable Roland Ray, my cabinet colleagues present, and the staff of the Ministry of Agriculture, and particularly the Acting Permanent Secretary, uh, Mr. Anselm, and the Director of Agriculture, um, Mr. Brumant, and the Financial Secretary. Everybody, good morning. Uh, I'm very happy to be here. Uh, I had opted not to speak, but I was instructed by the Minister of Agriculture I must speak, and so on. So I like to follow instructions. <laughs> Um, but I'm very happy to be here to, to witness yet another major intervention in our efforts to bolster agricultural production in Dominica and to assure us of our food security and our ability to reduce on our food import bill and, and ensure that we provide uh, fresh uh, uh, meats to our population. Uh, this is a major investment of $5 million in terms of construction, and another $1.4 million in terms of additional equipment uh, for the abattoir. So, so we're talking about $6.4 million. And oftentimes, we hear people say um, that nothing is done in agriculture. Um, and the unfortunate thing is that, Minister, is that sometimes the entire Ministry of Agriculture remains quiet and silent on this, and they don't, they don't give the facts uh, to the people. So that narrative of nothing happening in agriculture permeates the society. But the reality is um, uh, agriculture has received and continues to receive major injection of funds. $7.3 million uh, was used to procure uh, materials uh, for persons in the poultry and pork subsector. $7.3 million uh, of grants. Um, and we're not even talking about fisheries. Fisheries is a separate entity all to itself. We're talking about agriculture on the land, not in the, in the aqua agriculture and, and marine um, agriculture. So, so this is just investments on land in Dominica. And these are just a few components of the, of the various interventions that we've made in agriculture. Uh, and so all of this is an effort. First of all, the government recognizes the importance of agriculture. Yes, we're moving heavily into the service industry. Yes, we're moving heavily into tourism. Yes, we're moving heavily into the development and expansion of the small business uh, sector in Dominica. But agriculture for us remains the center of our efforts towards transforming Dominica. And I believe more people we can bring into Dominica. This is why the investments we're making in, 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 in tourism, the invest, investments we're making in the infrastructure, for example, the construction of international airport, all of these things are going to benefit 
the consumers. Because when you take, for example, avocados, we can no longer expect to permeate or to take advantage of the markets uh, of the av avocados by still selling on, on the boats. We have to get this airlifted um, so that we reduce on, on ripening and, and wastage. So there are huge potentials there in terms of the connectivities and the connections between agriculture and infrastructure we're investing in and, and tourism. And of course, the abattoir can only be successful. And I believe that if we, with this investment and of course um, strengthening the, the management structure at the abattoir and, and, and um, and even maybe getting, uh, we've been asking for private sector to, to manage it because I don't believe government should be managing anything. Um, you know, that's a more private sector. Our, our role as government is to facilitate the investments. You know? So we're putting those, those investments in place, hoping that a private sector person can, can come forward and take advantage of an opportunity. Because you can make money with this abattoir um, because Dominicans eat a lot of pork and Dominicans eat a lot of chicken. And we import chicken from other parts of the world. And the reality is, what we get, um, it'll, it'll take six, seven months before you get to us. And sometimes, usually, we in these small islands get the lower grade um, chicken. But, but when you buy a chicken from the chicken parts from the abattoir, you, you're guaranteed that you'll get the top quality um, chicken fresh you know, so in terms of slaughtering and getting onto your plate, uh, uh, you know, talking about a few days. And, and so one can appreciate the impact on one's health in Dominica. And of course, we know what we are feeding the chickens with. Uh, we know how, how much um, um, antibiotics we give them. Um, so we have control and knowledge of all of these elements. And so it's important for us to recognize the importance of the, of the, of the investments in, in the abattoir. But for the abattoir to be successful, we, the consumers of Dominica, have to procure the meats. Because when people talk about agriculture and more should be done for agriculture, my question to them is, are, are you making a concerted effort to purchase locally produced items? If we go to the supermarkets and demand locally produced items, then we will see them stuck up on the shelves. And, and, and so it is matter for us now in Dominica to consume what we grow um, so that we can, we can build capacity because every time we buy a pound of chicken that's imported from Brazil or, or elsewhere in the United States, uh, this is, these, are, these are jobs we're exporting. And it's a foreign exchange that we are allowing to leave the country. And if we allow too much of a foreign exchange to leave our country, because you know, in Dominica we have zero foreign exchange um, restrictions. Other countries in the Caribbean, if you're to um, uh, you know, um, repatriate 500 US dollars, you have to get an approval from the Ministry of Finance of those countries because they want to ensure that they don't have a challenge to their, to their, to their um, central banks. But so, so it's important for us to understand that as consumers, we have to, Dominicans, we have to consume more of what we grow. From a broader agricultural standpoint, you know, um, I, 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 I want to say that we have to continue expanding the tree crop sector in Dominica. It's, we, 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 it, is, it is too crucial, and this is where you're gonna get People who do not have the, 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 the time to, 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 to deal with the daily presence on the farms are going to get involved in. So, and we talk about coconuts, we talk about avocados, uh, we talk about cocoa, we talk about coffee, um, you know, citrus. We, 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 we have to ensure that we, we, we're able to resuscitate um, these tree crops. Um, to, the, to, the, to, to the extent that we should. Obviously, we were dramatically affected by, by, the, by the storms and the hurricanes. But we have to get back to, 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 this, uh, to, to this investment because there are, there are money to be made in this. And of course, we have to continue to promote um, diversification. Not diversification from, but diversification including. You know, including. Um, because it's important for the farmer. There's no way a farmer is gonna survive if you are only planting dashing. Dashing will take seven, eight months. Well, what's gonna to happen to you between this, in the seven, eight months? And so you, we must have something that, that we can sell um, throughout, throughout the period of year and, and, and make some money from. I can tell you that agriculture has money. Um, and if I go into agriculture as I should, commercially, I can tell you I'll, I'll make money in agriculture because there is money to make in agriculture. And what, I, what I do, um, Ricky, 
um, Roman, is that I plant outside of what people call the season. And I believe that we can plant any crop in Dominica, any time of the year, and not, not in any particular one season. So we have dashing year round, we have yams year round, we have pumpkins year round, we have watermelon year round. We, can't, we have to address the issue of supply. Because uh, uh, somebody's not gonna buy from you in an intermittent manner. They must know you're able to supply them on a weekly basis, X amount. And there has to also be consolidation among farmers. If each of us were to go about you know, selling 500 pounds of, of, of yams or 20 pounds of yams each, it will be difficult, but if we consolidate, and this is why we threw Dex here, and Dex is not to displace the, the hucksters, it is to really complement what the hucksters are doing. This is why we have provided Dex with $5 million um, to, to purchase from the farmers uh, so that farmers get paid within 48 hours of having supplied the, the produce to Dex here. And Dex is even seeking to have um, supply contracts with farmers so that they know every week they can get from you X amount and so on. And I think that we have to help the farmers uh, to understand and appreciate the need for they, they themselves to be able to sign agreements because you're, you're a businessman. Uh, money matters must be written, legal matters must be written. And if, you, if you're a businessman, delayed money must be written and to sign this, 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 this contract so that they know when I plant, I am guaranteed that I have a market at a particular price um, so that there is a greater uh, surety of, of, of your sale and you're and making a return on your investment and so forth. I, I want to conclude by saying that I have the I have the highest and absolute uh, confidence in the Minister of Agriculture. I think he's doing a fantastic job in the ministry, and I think agriculture will, will go from, from heights to heights and from strength to strength um, with the leadership that the minister uh, is providing the Ministry of Agriculture and ably supported by the minister for, for fisheries um, and blue economy. And of course, um, my, my friend, um, Honorable uh, Joseph, who's, who's helping with the, with the agro-processing and of course, the grants available to, to farmers. My constituents have told me one is major agriculture coming to Vegas in Penville, so we need to set up a date so I can, I can inform them tomorrow of that. But, but there are huge opportunities, and I think that, that the Dominicans need to engage themselves in more of constructive engagement. If you're criticizing something, it must be to make it better. It must be to improve it. Okay, okay, we say we're gonna build a road. The road is 12 feet well, you know, squared, but I think the road should be 13 feet, you know. But to say that we don't need the road, um, or we don't need those investments. It makes no sense. We're not helping children to understand life and to grow up in a sense of, 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 of hope and, and confidence in, in themselves and their society and their future. And so it's important for us to, to, to speak positive over things. Let us talk about the positive things that are happening. Let us speak about the things that, that, are, that, are, hap that are not happening that should be happening and how it should happen. And let us speak about the things that are happening that could be done differently. But for us to criticize something that's happening, so we're building six schools, we criticize six schools. We build an international airport that has eluded us for our entire existence, and we criticize an international airport. Okay, well, scary. Okay, the international airport is 2,850 meters long. But you don't think that's too long? You think it should be 2,500? I mean, do we need, you know, 2,850 because, you know, the other countries in the Caribbean, theirs is 25, two you know? Why did you have to do it to eight? You know, um, do, you, do, you, do you need um, five um, 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 jet bridges? Couldn't two work? You know, and, and maybe put the money somewhere else. Those kinds of conversations. But to, to tell us that you, we don't need anything on the is a waste of money and, and you're hoping that it won't be completed, you know, how do we engage you in that, in that kind of, 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 of engagement? I think. Uh, as an enlightened society, that we have to be more constructive, you know. Uh, uh, you know, and, and if 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 we're exposed to knowledge, 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 that knowledge must be reflected in our conversations, and our actions, and our engagements. And and so we we have to we have to do this. And and I want to also recognize the the leadership by Mr. Stevenson, you know, who has done a fantastic job in 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 advancing the the, the project. Uh, I I know it is a has all this all its um, nuances and all its um, requirements and so forth. So it's not, it's not an easy process sometimes, cumbersome process, but I think, you know, we could have love to see things maybe move faster sometimes, but at least things are moving and, and we're to push them so that we're hoping that we can complete the, the, the interventions, Mr. Paul, uh, within the 12 months, um, Dominicans 
must have woken up to three o'clock in the afternoon. These days, all seven o'clock is still bright outside. You know, I mean, you know people wash their tools at 2.30 and we're going we're gonna to rest. I think we're resting too much in Dominican Cape State. We have to work harder. You know, Saturday we're taking a break. If, it's, if it's Saturday is a Sabbath, then go to, go, go to church. But if Sunday is a Sabbath, then work on a Sunday. You know, but we have to work. You know, the Bible cautions, cautions people against sleeping too much. It, it, it's... it's it says, uh, he, he who is the lover of sleep, poverty shall be, shall be your companion. You, you, you see, so, so, so why don't you understand for, the, for, for, the, for your physiological health, you, are, you have to sleep a bit. But for Christ's sake, by I me. Mean, <laughs> I mean, we, we can't be sleeping too much in this place. You have to, we, are, we, are, we have to work harder. So this thing about work at 4 o'clock and we go home and go home and what, do what? Netflix? What? YouTube? When we have work to do. You know, because time loss can never regain. So we have work to do. And we have to try to finish projects within the time frame. We can't be skylarking, you know, on a, on a simple thing that, so we, let us finish this thing so we can move to the next one, rather than not finishing and holding back the other things. And that's what happens. The, the more we take, thing, take time to implement things is, 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 the, is the longer we take to, to, to do other things and so on. Sometimes time loss is money. Then we have cost overruns now, and you have this and that, and, 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 and then it affects other projects. So these are the kind of things that the government is, is, is challenged with, and, and people don't appreciate you know, that, that when we give a contract to a guy and he takes, it's supposed to be in five months, and 15 months later, it's not done. It's costing the state. You know what I'm saying? It's costing the state, and I think there has to be a greater sense of diligence among all of us. You know, I'm not there pointing finger at any one person. Um, we're having conversations as Dominicans, and I think it's important for us to be positive about ourselves, positive about our country, and positive about the future. You know, we, we, we can't be a Christian society and be so negative. You know, to me, we have to be more positive and constructive and, 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 and give our children the sense that, 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 that life is good. Life is good. Life is hopeful. But if your children wake up in the morning and all they hear is talking about negative, what do you think will happen to your children? You, you, you are conditioning your children to feel a particular way. You are socializing your children to feel a particular way. And, and what society are you going to get? And so you, you, we, we reap what we sow. And so let us sow positive seeds so we can have positive results and so on. I, keep tell, I always tell people, this is not about me, you know. It's never about me. Don't look at me. You know, the Bible tells, look to the mountain from whence your, your strength come upon. Look to the Lord, not me. I'm just a, I'm just a, I'm just a missionary on, on earth for this, <laughs> carrying out the Lord's work. You know, you know what I'm saying? So, so let us be constructive. Let us, let us do what we have to do. You know, and I, and I think these investments there, this, this, this contract signing is, is, a, is, a, is an important day for for farmers and especially um, the, the livestock farmers. And of course, as the minister has indicated, special arrangements have been made for the intervening period uh, so that those who, who, who have been clients of the, um, of the, of the abattoir will continue to, to, to be held during the intervening period. And of course, once the abattoir comes in, 40 and um, 4,000 birds, um, or I, I rather use the word fowls, <laughs> because yeah, my, before people think it's some 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 little little bird we're talking about. Um, so I like to use language people use, you know. I, I'm, a, I'm a textbook person, you know. So four thousand fowls will, will be will be will be, will be, will be slaughtered um, when when these investments are made, and and so it's a remarkable improvement. And and I know that um, people like um, Michael Aitken would will, will certainly. Um, be able to, to continue with the revolutionary efforts that they, they had under the circumstances. Uh, so with this new equipment and these new facilities, I think the sky is the limit for us. And I think our goal there is to, is to see whether in the short term, medium term, to take, to reduce our import by about 30%. We don't do everything one time, but let's still us a target. Even when I said the target of 700 million people questioning this thing, but if, you, if you're a student and you say, well, you accept a C because C is a pass, then that's you. Then when you get an F, you, come, you shouldn't be surprised. But we always have to, we always have to push for an A. You know, an A plus, you know, being the top 1% of the class. So you can never, you can never double. But if you say, well, okay, Caesar passing, if you, if, you, if you have no ambition 
and you have no vision, people question those things. But you, have to have, you, have, you must be ambitious. You know, no matter, and I think that we have the ability. We may not be 2030, but we're pushing. When we get to 2030, we'll assess where we are, and then we'll take it forward. When I said by 2015, we'll have one university graduate in every home in Dominica, people, people laugh. But I mean, we've, we've basically achieved this if you look at the number of associate degrees and, and first degrees and second degrees at, at, at homes in Dominica who never dream of having a degree, ability to have a degree in their home because their parents were able to afford it. And, and so we have to set targets and so on. I, I always maintain from 2000, I've been criticizing the statistics department and the government um, um, records. I believe that this 274 million that agriculture is contributing is way lower than what is actually the number. We're low, and I think that we have to work on our statistics um, gathering, the data gathering, so we can have a real impact. Because I sell, nobody, nobody comes and take much record of that. <laughs> you, you see what I'm saying? So, so are there many of us like that who, who will sell from time to time, and no records are, are, are taken and so on. How do we, how do we collate these records and how do we, how do we put them there and so forth? So, 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 so it's way more. And of course, the hucksters never tell us what exactly they because they don't want to know their business, um, and and so forth. So so it's way 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 higher now. I, I believe that I believe that it might be very well be about three seventy four rather than two seventy four. In terms of, and I mean, people do agro processing. They put in a suitcase to go Guadeloupe and St. Thomas. It is not recorded as exports. It recorded as as personal luggage. But that person comes back home with three, four thousand euros, three, four thousand US dollars. It's not, it's not captured as as um, foreign exchange earned through agro processing. So you have all of these issues there, and then the hawks come back from Saint Martin with his cash. Yes, he may be declared the customs and so on, and comes from Guadeloupe with his cash, but it's not recorded as money from hawkstering. So, so, so the contribution to agriculture is way more than two hundred seventy-five. And the size of the economy in is way more than what is being recorded because we're underreporting agriculture and our processing not even captured in this, really. The, 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 the whole number of, 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 of cottage industries across Dominica. So, so, so we really have to work on this so that we can have a true picture of the contribution of agriculture. You know, I, I, I had said I was going to speak, but if you allow me to speak about agriculture, I could speak for a very long time because, because I intrinsically, I believe, I mean, agriculture and the need for us to grow food and to supply ourselves. We must, we must always ensure that this government and successive governments place agriculture at the center of the nation's development because food security is crucial to any, the survival of any country. And we do not want to diversify the economy away from agriculture. We must diversify the economy, including agriculture, you know, and so that all of the sectors can contribute and, and, and be able to to, to complement each other. So this is, this is great, great news. I want to thank, again, Mr. Stevenson and your staff, and the, the Minister of Agriculture and the PS, and Director of Agriculture, all the staff, who played a part, the Minister and the FS, and the Minister of Finance, you know, who, who, who was central to all of his um, financing agreements with the, with the World Bank and other partners. But a number of other things that we're working on, agriculture is concerned, and of course, in time, the Minister of Agriculture will, will express and articulate those things. But um, it's an exciting time, and I'm happy to be here this morning. Thanks for inviting me. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Prime Minister. We certainly hear your passion about the sector and its place within our economic de development. And of course, we note your admonition to become more productive members of our society. At this point, I'd like to invite Mr. Paul, Patrick Paul, of Regional Contractors, Inc., to join us at the front. He will sign the contract with the Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Agriculture, Mr. Ryan Ansam.
ask them to cheat for you. Thank you, gentlemen. It's left to me now to say a general thank you to the members of our head table, those who addressed us, as well as those of you who um, took time to attend the contract signing ceremony. Mr. Paul, thank you for being here, and we wish you every success with the execution of the project. To the members of the media, thank you so much for coming. Good morning, everyone. Have a wonderful week.